Acne scars are a huge problem for a lot of people and not just on the face either. It's the back, the neck, and the chest can also be a problem. And if this is an area that you've had a concern with and want to do something about it, boy, are you in the right place because today I'm going to give you tips, tricks, treatments, and everything you need to know about how to reduce and remove acne scarring on the other areas, including the chest, neck, and back. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about all that in today's video. Well, hey, I'm Chris Gibson, and this is Chris Gibson Live, and I'll welcome you and your other guys in the community. Welcome back to the channel. This is where we help you look good, feel good, so you can live good. And today, I am going to be giving you tips on what to do about acne scarring on the chest, neck, and back. So if that's a concern of yours, again, this is the right place to be. If you are new with us, please, by all means, subscribe. Hit the little notification bell so that you get updates when I have new videos out because believe me, we talk about all sorts of stuff on this channel that have to do with health and wellness and so wouldn't want you to miss any of that. So if that's something you'd like to do, go ahead and do that now and we're going to dive right into what you can do about scarring on the chest, neck and back, particularly the back, but this does apply to all the areas. There are two types of acne scarring that are common and that's atrophic and hypertrophic and atrophic scars or atrophic scars. Uh, are the kinds that are the indents, the ones that sort of sink in, or the really super large pores, or the uneven pore surface that kind of catch the light and make them look a lot more, I guess, severe than they really are. Uh, and there's a lot you can do with makeup and foundations, and I have all kinds of videos on how to cover them. But there's also hypertrophic scarring, or keloids, which is the scars that raise up. And so a lot of people that have had acne problems, particularly on the back where it's a very wide flat surface they have sort of a rolling problem where they have a little bit of both so it's important to think about these treatments i'm going to go over uh, maybe you may have to do more than one kind of treatment to get the result that you want but we're going to start with the really the easiest one which is deep deep deep, deep exfoliation i can't talk today um, anyway so deep exfoliation is really really the first step that I recommend to all my clients and I recommend to you because a lot of times when you remove a lot of that old dead skin on the back that sort of gets missed we don't use like scrubs or sponges or any of those things that we should be using on our skin back there just doing that can really make a very big improvement on your skin and how it looks so sometimes you don't need the more I won't say severe treatments, but the more expensive, deeper treatments, try that first. So the way that you accomplish that, and I have a video on back acne that goes over this in detail, but for this video, let's do it really quickly, is there is a back exfoliation brush that you can use on your chest and back that will help remove skin. There's the Buff Puff sponge that I recommend all the time, whether you have scarring, acne, or any skin problems or not, because it does such a great job of removing dead skin cells from the skin and making it look so much better. And also there are rolling pins, needle pins that can also help with this type of scarring. And I will put, um, and I will put links in the video description box to these products for you so that you have access to them. You can go and look and read about them and, and all of that. But the, really the best first way is to try to exfoliate and see where you are after that. You may be very happy with those results. If that does not help you to the degree that you want, there are other treatments. These are a little more severe and really should be done in a dermatologist's office or a licensed esthetician. God, I got that out of my mouth the first time. That word is so hard to say. But you wanna have someone who's licensed in doing these because they require some expertise. The first thing we wanna talk about that's outside of exfoliation is laser treatments. And it's a pulsating dye laser treatment. And what that does is it applies the light therapy across the skin and it sinks down into the upper skin layer and it sort of evens out the skin layer. So it moves the skin layer around a little bit, reorganizes it, flattens it out, and it can be very, very effective, especially in that rolling kind of scarring where you've got both. It's very, very effective on the neck and chest. And again, it needs to be done in office by a licensed technician. The next treatment I wanna talk about is cryotherapy, and that's basically freezing the skin. The skin is lowered to a low temperature, and it it kills off the outer layer of skin and it does have to peel off. It can be painful. It is the same thing they do when they remove warts and moles in office, in dermatologist's office. It's just applied to a larger area. There is some risk of infection as you heal, but it can be very, very effective, especially on the keloid or raised hypertrophic scarring that it really can make a difference. So the best thing to do is go into the dermatologist and get, uh, you know, an idea or 
his advice on what would be best if you're thinking of using cryotherapy. The next area that I wanna talk about is an area that I am very, very well versed in and that's skin peels. And I talk a lot about skin peels. Again, there are videos on the channel for this subject. All you gotta do is do a little search and you'll find them. Skin peels remove the outer layer of skin through a chemical process, in which chemicals are applied, usually glycolic acid, phenol, sometimes it's uh, another hydraulic acid like salicylic acid. Those acids can even be mixed together in a formulation and applied to the skin for a set amount of time. And that's why you wanna have a licensed person or a dermatologist do this because it needs to be on the skin for a very specific amount of time because it burns, it does, oxidizes actually, oxidizes the skin over time in layers. So they know how long it needs to be applied to get the effect that you want without causing more damage to the skin or harming yourself if you try to do it or have someone do it for you. Then they apply another solution which neutralizes the acid and you go about your way and it skin peels, dries and peels off. And it can be very, very effective. I am a big proponent of skin products that uh, help remove old skin and exfoliate the skin. Skin peels are a chemical way of doing that there are natural ways of doing that, uh, obviously, to help for anti-aging. That's not what we're talking about here. We are talking about scar removal. We are trying, we are talking about scar removal where we are trying to get the skin to look very, very even. And then you can go to the more natural products that I recommend in maintaining skin and evening skin and, and all of those things that can help of the long term with your acne and your acne scarring. So these methods can really be a big, big help to you in reducing acne scarring, chest, neck, back, even your face if you're still working on acne scarring there. I'm gonna put a couple of videos also over here, one on back acne that details all of the things I talked about, the exfoliation process that we first talked about on uh, exfoliating your back. The other video on removing scarring, which goes into details about skin peels, which can be very, very helpful. So hit the little notification bell and I will see you over on the next ones.